There he goes. Welcome home. Hey. First order of business. P. I have to pay. How's it feel? I'm actually really glad I just did it. Like, yep. rip the rip band-aid band off. off. Band-aid's off. Done. Like, it's done. I'm a pilot now. Hold up. I'm getting ahead of myself. And on your throttle so you're ready for it. Okay, it looks like we got it made now. Without a gust. And on your throttle. Oh. Okay, go around. Pitching for VX until we're clear of obstacles. And then pitching for VY. Surprise there, huh? Oh yeah. Riding cowboy. Okay, there's a deer in the runway. Let's go around. Full power car feet off. Pitching for VX, and then I'm gonna bring up 10 degrees flaps. Perfect. In the world. Awesome. That was awesome. That was pretty good. What the heck was all that extra well, lift that on the last? that was Mother Nature, man. I can't even count the number of people I've met who've said, I always wished I would have got my pilot's license. My dad once told me it was a plane or kids. Thanks, Dad. That license seems to elude so many for reasons too numerous to count. In the time it took me to be check ride ready, I watched others struggle for instructor time, plane availability, finances, and unfavorable weather. That's not part of the curriculum, but it's a lesson you need to learn. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Maybe part of becoming a pilot is being a bit strong-headed, making sacrifices, or willing to fight when you want something, and it seems everything is getting in your way. I had a million reasons to quit, too. But could I live with myself never knowing what it feels like to be a pilot? To be truly free to go wherever and whenever? To not know what I could have seen or places I could have gone? There's really only one way to find out. Just go right on, so you can just accelerate the full throttle, and you want to do that fairly quickly, just go right on in until it hits the stop, and then hold it in, yep, okay. a little further, all the way till you can't push it anymore. Okay. There you go. And then now we're just steering with our feet. Okay, airspeed's good, RPMs are good, oil pressure's good. Okay, good. Alright, so there's rotation, so lift your nose off the ground, just pull back, but pull back. There, we're leaving. Here, about here, we're just going to slowly start raising our nose. And we're going to get into the float phase, where we're just dissipating energy, getting close to the runway. And then as we get down here, we'll just hold it off as long as we can. All horns going, that's good. And then we're on the ground. What'd you think? Interesting. Were you doing most of the flying? Oh yeah, but it's not, it's not, yeah, it's definitely not what I was I think our relationship just went to a new level. You de you're either crazy or you're fun, yeah. one of the... Okay. All right, let's say you just lost your engine. I'm looking for somewhere near a house. I'll say, I'll pick the same spot. Let's come over here, yeah, and try to get around. Okay, so we're gonna do a 180 here, put yourself on a left downwind. Yep. Come around for a second, or I could bring in flaps and try to come down faster. Yeah, yeah, we could try that. I would probably dump full flaps, so you're not gonna land on the airstrip at this point, but you might okay, land on that I don't even know field. where it is, so. Yeah, okay. it's right under us. Aim for just beyond those, that rubbish there. I think we'd land in that field, we might roll out. Here are okay. those trees. Let's go around. So okay. go around. Is full power car feet off? Don't let that nose come. Full power, quicker, quicker. You gotta get that in. Get that car feet. Don't let it turn. That's all. I'm left turning tendencies working against you. So Not you lost okay. the right rudder to prevent that. Get that car feet off. Yeah. yeah. So we're by five feet in the air. So go ahead and let it drift down, and then start to refloat. There you go. Just try to keep it there. A little bit of right rudder. Yeah. There you go. Just kind of keep holding off. Right rudder. Right rudder. Right rudder. So notice how we landed in a crab. Yeah. Gotta be more disciplined with that rudder. Okay. Never let your nose move. That's yeah. gotta get fixed first. Okay. So you just lost your engine. Yeah. RP on. I'm looking for a landing spot while I'm trying to pitch for 65. Make it, yep. Um, it's gonna be close if I don't use any flaps. We're coming on final. How do we know if we're gonna make that field? 
Uh, whether or not it's moving underneath of us is a good indication. Yeah, so it's pretty much staying fixed, isn't it? Yep. You know, it's staying there, which tells us that's our aiming point, just like if we're coming in for a normal landing, so yep. we're probably going to nail it. So one thing you do, don't get slow, keep your airspeed. Yep. Um, yep, looks like we're losing it. Yep. So too much of a headwind? Probably a headwind. Okay. That was a long ways to go with that okay. headwind. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in a little bit of power. Let's land there anyways, just for fun. Keep that 65, and we'll just put her down there. Until I started flight school, I had flown in a small airplane once as a child. The only people I knew who were pilots were extended family friends with thousands of hours, but we'd never really talked much about the subject. One day I was driving by the airport and I saw ground school on their reader board. After inquiring, I decided to attend, thinking, even if I never fly, I'll likely learn a lot. For someone who's always loved airplanes, I was shocked how little I really knew. Cool, put her down on grass. That was a nice landing, huh? Actually, it was pretty good. It's actually easier to land on grass than it is asphalt. It's way more forgiving. Here, a little crab, it just slides. It doesn't throw you yeah, and shoot you off the runway. <laughs> and just like that, I did exactly what they say not to do. I quit flying. Life simply had other priorities. I knew I'd finish. What I didn't know is how frustrating it would be picking the yoke up again after quitting so early in my flight training. I was so close to the most critical phase, solo. It would be over nine months until my next flight. The thing is gusts. You know, we got six mile per hour gusts. You want to pick those speeds up three knots. Now you call that gust factor. So I can feel the wind really blowing us. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to have less time on downwind and more time on final. Yeah, we're definitely coming in. Uh, looks like we got our runway made, but I don't know that I'm going to bring in any flaps yet. In fact, it looks like we're going to come up a little bit short. That's how it feels. Thoughts? And on your throttle so you're ready for it. Okay, it looks like we got it made now. Without a gust. And on your throttle. Oh. The one thing that I see in what you did is, I mean, you need to recover, right? But you're over control on the pitch over what's necessary. Okay. I pitch it up to an angle that it would possibly, and then just don't recover <laughs> Yeah. Oh, see, I see. Okay. See how you're over controlling a bit? Okay. Okay, so I want you to just kind of stall it. Let's first stall it. Hold it back all the way. Use your rudder pedals to not let it spin. Okay. Well, there you go. Oh, oh, oh. There's a spin. Yeah, there you did a spin entry on your own. So now that's exactly what we don't want to do okay. in real life. This is falling leaf. Just yeah, just kind of pull the yoke all the way back, and then okay. just don't let it roll over. Just use your feet. Just hold it all the way back, and just play with it. There you go, Jesse. See, that's not as bad as everybody makes it, right? Right. And then if I just if release, you just release it. It's flying now. Okay, rotate. Hold it off. We push back and forth, just slowly back. Make small changes, there you go. Yeah, there's lots of things going on. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm annoyed, that's my best <laughs> word in the world. Awesome. That was awesome. That was pretty good. What the heck was all that extra well, that the last? that was mother nature, man. I'd you made every decision that I would have made a fraction of a second later, but it was like very close. It was like okay. right there. You want to know what someone does when they're nervous? Just stick a camera on them without them knowing before they're about to fly a lamp for the first time, and you'll see their nervous habits. <laughs> What's the word? Are you flying? Uh, it looks like it. Do you feel like you need a checklist for this, or do you feel like you got it down pretty good? Definitely feel like I got it down. Dave's saying he's gonna trick me one of these times and he's gonna he's gonna set me up for failure. I just I don't know. I, don't, I guess I don't know what he's gonna do to me. I have no idea. So I love see you later. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, I hope you see me later. That's the plan. Right? That's the plan. <laughs> Finding the urge to like kiss you like, what if I never see you I again? Know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not make it too dramatic. Yeah. yeah no pressure. <laughs> yep, Bye. Yep. Is it pretty exciting as an instructor to see students solo? Yeah, yeah. Looks like our approach.
approach is clear and looks like our pattern is clear. Definitely a little bit nervous, kind of kind of interesting. I feel like today's been a pretty frustrating day. And we're going full power. RPMs are good, oil pressure is good. Keeping it on center line till we reach 55. We'll put the nose up just a little bit. Some say the two best moments in their life is when their kids were born and when they first soloed in an airplane. It's an experience with few comparisons. You've never been so alive and free, yet sober and awake all at the same time. Your instructor gets out of the airplane and says, I'll see you in three landings. It's just you in the airplane. No one to save you, no one to talk you through things, and if that plane is gonna fly, it's because of you. A little bit of rain developing right here all of a sudden. Everything's looking pretty good. We're a little bit high. I'm actually going to bring in full flaps. Go to 40 degrees flaps and bring in the nose down. Definitely really nervous. Like we're actually in some snow. And I feel like I'm trying to fight Mother Nature a little bit here. Little power. Little power. Get us over center line. Pretty good. We're going to round out here. Blown, getting blown, getting blown. Looking pretty good. Well, that's one. How'd it feel? Yeah, it felt actually pretty good. Uh, there's actually a bit of snow off the end of the runway there, so that was kind of an interesting encounter. Uh, yeah, it looked good. We're just saying that if you, uh, you already earned dinner, but if you make two more good landings, there's dessert. Roger that. Dessert sounds great. Bring my power back. We'll kind of round out right here. A little bit lower. Around out there. Good. A little bouncy on the landing there, but I made it stick, so that's good. Not sure if that was a good decision or not, but it felt okay. I guess what I'm really wondering is whether or not I've earned dessert. That's all I can think about right now. We made it, guys. We made it. It's a good day. Kill anybody. Nice <laughs> job, Jesse. Yeah. Just sitting, just standing here, that's what I need. Well, I haven't been a model in a long time. This is, I'm kind of like, this is a tradition to get photos of people right that do their solos. This, this, this. Is this how you normally cut shirts? I don't know. Which which shirt are we doing? A little bit more of mine. You want more? <laughs> more I really than like to take yeah, Because, you know, <laughs> what this is all about is you feeling, you know, we're, we're cutting, <laughs> sometimes I'm cutting around raw sweat, but this one here. Yeah. Isn't so bad. Ow, ow, ow! You're gonna, the rest of the day, and you can't. You have to leave that on the rest of the day. I know. Take it off. That's precious. That's awesome. <laughs> A little breezy back here. Once you surpass that challenge and see that you can, in fact, fly an airplane, your mind starts to wonder, where can this plane take me? like this, you know, in mountain flying, if you're more than 2,000 feet above it, we usually don't worry about it. Okay. But if we're less than 2,000 like we are now, yep. then it's, it's a good idea not to hit it square on. Okay. You kind of want to get close to it and then kind of get a 45, cross the ridge, and then once you cross the ridge, go back on course. We kind of turn this way for a little bit here, Yep. and then kind of hang back a right as we come across the ridge there. Yep, that'll okay. work. And the runway they show is 3,600 feet long. Okay. But as you get close to it, you're going to notice that there's tall trees on both ends. Okay. So, um, and we've got a displaced threshold on both ends. Okay. So I, don't, I don't know. There's not very much of it that's actually usable. Probably okay. 1,500 feet or so. So at what point, if we're not down on the runway, at what point do we want to go around, you know? So probably if we're not on the ground by the windsock, Yep, then for sure. We want to go ahead and go around and okay. not wait too much longer. And we're established on final. I'm going to go ahead and bring in full flaps. Coming down quick, coming down quick. Going to do a go around on that one. It's getting kind of messy at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I got a little way there. Just keep fighting it. Fighting it all the way down. And good. They don't want to let me on the ground, do they? <laughs> That'll do. Yeah, you got lots of runway. Flaps are up, brakes are on. Nice. Well, the first one wasn't luck. We just proved it. Hey, well, there's that. 
Slowly, your disbelief starts to give way to a hint of confidence. It's been a couple of flights now since you thought about just sticking to ground activities for the rest of your life. Maybe I actually can do this flying thing. I've survived the onslaught of engine failures, cockpit familiarization, traffic patterns, slow flight, stalls. My hands, feet, and eyes are starting to talk to each other. I've learned a whole new alphabet and safely landed a few times all on my own. I'm through the worst of it. I think if I didn't know better, I might just be a pilot. And you're off into the big sky. Break time. Break time. <laughs> tap out, tap out. You want to A, walk home, B, call a taxi, or C, fly with us. Or hitchhike. What's your choice? I'll fly. You're gonna fly? Yeah. It's yes. Not, it's not that bad. Not that bad. Fun. Oh, good. <laughs> I like to hear that. As soon as you take off and make your turn out for a new destination, though, you realize immediately that flying an airplane is a fraction of piloting. How do you know where you're going? What's the weather like? What altitude is best? Is there wind? How much fuel do you have? Where can you land? And how do you avoid other airplanes? Airports have towers that talk to you? What the heck do you say to a tower? Approach Cessna 172 uh, in 19 or 69 or 8. Cessna 19 or 69 or 8. Basically, knowledge, so go ahead and try and give him your instructions. Yep. Spokane Approach uh, Skyhawk 19 or 69 or 8 directly over our Lee, about 5,500 feet en route to KMSO, full stop landing. Cessna 69 or 8, clock 011 to 6. 0116698. Zulu Tower, uh, Cessna 172, N19 or 69 or 8. 19698, Missoula Tower. Missoula Tower, uh, we're uh, Evaro, and uh, we're at 5,300 feet uh, inbound for a full stop. Remember 69 or 8, Roger. Go ahead and follow 93 as you come in through Evaro and take it to the Y, and then you can set up for a three mile final to runway 12. Three mile final to runway 12, follow highways in uh, 698. Zulu Tower, uh, Skyhawk 19698, just crossing the Y, uh, clear to land, three mile final on 12. November 698, you can turn final, continue for landing clearance. I got vehicles on the runway, they'll be uh, off momentarily. And Cessna 698, runway 12, clear to land, you're number one. Alpha by Alpha 3, cross 2, 6, 6, 9, or 8. Here, prop. All right, radios are on. We're doing our three stop, full stop landings at a towered airport. Now we're going to let them know that we're a student pilot, and we're also going to request three touch and goes. By touch and go, I mean stop and go. Missoula Tower, November 1, 9, or 6, 9, or 8 at Golf. November 1, 9, or 6, 9, or 8, Missoula Tower, make right to close traffic. Report midfield. Ready for takeoff. Missoula Tower, uh, 6, 9, or 8, midfield. November 6, 9, or 8, runway 1, 2, clear to stop and go. Clear to stop and go, 1, 2, 6, 9, or 8, thank you. So we're going to have to keep an eye on him, uh, kind of keep an eye on uh, what he's doing. Touchdown. Make sure we touch down past him, avoid wake turbulence. And uh, he's two miles south, looking for him. Traffic in sight. And Tanker 1-2 has the Cessna in sight. Tanker 1-2, thank you. To be uh, ready for a go around here, just in case something happens. Man, that, ru that runway is really deceptive, like how, how far down it is. And we'll go pick up our friends, and I think we gotta get the heck out of Dodge. You've been good to us today. Thanks for getting us home safe. Fantastic day. We made it home.
It's time for dinner. Flight service. Hey, good morning, student pilot. File and activate a flight plan VFR. Clear prop. Checking the rudders here real quick. Going through controls, check. Looks good. Looks like we're clear in the pattern and clear on the approach. RPMs are good. Oil pressure is good. Gonna rotate at 65. Got my chart available if I need it. Following the zero radio, 108.8. Let's do an ident. Island path VORs recorded at 1450 Zulu. Airnet Sierra update 2 valid until 2100 Zulu. No significant IFR expected outside of convective activity. Mountain obscuration Looks for good. Idaho, Montana, White. Automated weather observation. 1459er nine Zulu. Wind zero two zero at zero eight. Zero two zero at eight. So we may end up using runway two when we get there, and runway two has a right hand pattern. This is Skylane eight 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 five X ray. We're departing on zero two for a downwind departure out of the pattern along the river, the Pocan River. We got a guy right here. Have traffic in sight off of the. Uh, West Wing here, we're about 4,300. Uh, somebody was 4,500 feet. I didn't quite hear what they were, where they were going, but I don't see them now. So, I guess we'll just keep an eye out. We're entering a right downwind for runway two. There aren't too many things in life I've done for 20 to 30 hours, about half a work week, that I've thought to myself, this is a piece of cake. Yet in the same time, I've gone from not even knowing an airplane had a trim wheel or how to read an airspeed indicator to taking someone else's airplane on a spring morning flight over lakes and rivers to new airports, all alone, safely. Maybe you've done it too. Looked up in the sky at the sound of a propeller, Wondered, what's it like to fly over your house? And then all of a sudden, you're the one everyone is watching as you do a steep turn and wave to the onlookers. So Alyssa that I'm gonna fly by, why not? It's my first solo cross country, so she's gonna come outside and wave. There it is right there. I don't see her down there. Oh, it looks like she did come outside. Maybe. Yep, there she is. Too fun. All right, we'll see you soon, love. And a little bit of a right crosswind there. All right. If I didn't know better, that was flying. A pilot, a plane, and a plan. For once you feel like you've got the plane under control, you're on course, executing the plan, and you can just look out the window, take it all in. Okay, your palms are sweaty, you forgot to lean your mixture a couple times, and you've only taken a peek into the ocean, but right now you feel real pride. Overall, I say the flight was a complete success. So, it feels pretty good. Can't really tell what I did really good or really bad. Overall, it definitely makes me feel a lot more confident. Very good. And we made it, guys. Testing. Radio check. Yeah, I need to work on this camera mounts. The last time I flew was no fun. Um, and I did not record that flight, and I regret it. Really feel like there was a lot of valuable lessons I could have learned from watching the footage. Wind was gusting from 11 to 21 knots, 22 knots. I think it was gusting probably closer to 30. I guess I would say I was scared. There, I said it. So, uh, very smooth this morning. So, we're going to go out and try to work on a bunch of stuff this morning and see how far we can get. Other wind 3, 4, 0 at 5. Just go ahead and do a normal takeoff since we have pretty low wind. So different from what happened the other day. Or wind is 350 at 5. Our speed's alive. Um, looks like I actually need to put my shoulder harness on. I put us a little bit behind the airplane, so that kind of sucks. Should have done that before takeoff. I'm going to point the nose of my toes. I've got my hand on the throttle and we're ready for a go around. 
to be honest with you, like my confidence is really shaken after the variable crosswind day. It feels like really scary to just even fly alone right now. I feel like having an instructor would make me feel a little bit better. Sometimes in learning, you are making a lot of progress and then sometimes you have something happen and it really sets you back and I think that's where I am. It's kind of always the joke with pilots is that your confidence goes really high and then really low, then really high, then really low. Wind is actually... Uh, yeah, I actually would say it is 350. Feels like it's actually coming from the left. And here I was thinking it was coming from the right. Small mistake there. Up here, it feels like it's from the right. Even though when we take off, it feels like it's from the left. That was better. Oh, can't do that. So that's an answer. Can't can't break that hard on this plane. These are those things you don't know. You don't know how hard you can push on the brakes. Three, four, zero at six. Three, four, zero. Why can't I think? So if this is zero, three, four, zero is going to be a little bit to the west. Rotate. What the heck was that all about? I have a decision to make here about uh, continuing this flight. Well, it's kind of turning into a pretty good crosswind, but down on the runway, not so much. Um, I think what's really hard is I feel like the last time I flew, my confidence like really went down. I better get used to wind if you're going to fly, right? Uh, I don't know. I feel like I just need 100 landings or 5,000 landings or something. So the wind continues to move more and more to a crosswind, and that's exactly what the grass says here. It's about 50 degrees um, off the center line. 50 degrees, about half. That's a tough one. I feel like we're doing okay, but man, that's, that decision bit me in the butt the other day. Well, let's go ahead and do another, uh, another landing here. Famous last words, right? That was pretty good. I still feel behind the airplane. I don't know if that's ever going to stop or what. Yep, yeah, let's call it a day. I think the lower confidence from the other day really is affecting me. And like the fickle mistress that is aviation, you've come back down. No pun intended. Take an inventory and realize you're still a young pilot with a lot to learn. It's not the time to digress, though. The learning will never end. It's time to stretch your freedom. Your instructor says, I have confidence in you. I know you can do it. And he signs you off for what will be one of the longest flights alone so far. Unfamiliar airports, terrain, weather, and challenges. Over 150 miles is ahead of you and stops at three different airports. You've made a solid flight plan done copious amounts of practice the weather's favorable it's new and it's exciting and it's moderately frightening i think i see the airport there looks pretty good and i can see it's a little tight in here for sure and i'm gonna give myself a little bit of a long final just so i can kind of see what the wind is doing uh it looks like we have a displaced threshold probably because of the river and things We're actually going to follow the railroad tracks out and we're going to hit a couple of GPS points. We have a waypoint at Genesee and at Genesee we're going to contact the Lewiston Tower. Once we contact them and they respond, we'll let them know our intentions. We're who, who, where, where. Skyhawk 19 or 69 or 8, uh, departing runway 10 to the south. And we're pitching for 60. Automated weather observation. One six one four Zulu. Wind three four zero at zero six. Looks like I probably will be expecting runway three zero. Lewiston Towers, Skyhawk November one nine or six nine or eight. One six vector in the tower. Yeah, we're inbound for a full stop landing over Genesee 6500 uh, student pilot. Report a two mile right base for runway 30, wind 350 at 5, altimeter 29er, 9er, 9er, traffic 1 in a left close traffic pattern for runway 30. Two mile right base for 30, 69er. Lewiston Tower, I have traffic in sight. Uh, would you like me to follow? 69er. Affirmative, you'll be number two, clear to land. Clear to land, number two, six, nine, or eight.
Ooh, make that two new airports and landings. Just one more to go. Well, we still have to get home, but we'll get to that shortly. So here I am, most of the way through the first leg of my longest cross-country solo yet. Rocking along at 100 knots, wings levelish, 200 miles from home over a vast wilderness. No major roads, no towns, no real places to land, and I can see where I'll be in an hour. For once, I feel like I'm ahead of the airplane. And then my mind starts to ask new questions. So for the next uh, about 15 minutes or so, there's nothing out here, nothing. They took a very direct route, although there's a ranch right off my wing. That's human beings, I guess. Keeping an eye on the weather here. It looks like we're starting to get some clouds developing, but nothing crazy. Really aren't that many airports out here to monitor, so we're just not even going to worry about that. I get bumped around a little bit here. I kind of imagine that given the shape of these mountains. No, definitely not a good place to lose your engine out here. Uh, a lot of these areas are very rolling hills that make horrible landing spots. Probably go for an open area. Definitely try to stay clear of any wires or anything like that. Carpet on immediately. Um, then we'll check fuel set to full, mixture is full rich, make sure the carb heat's on. And we're checking the primers in locked and then we're checking right and left magnetos for a restart. Eight gallons per hour. Let's say it's nine. We have 38 usable gallons, so we could burn 10 gallons an hour for three and a half hours. Uh, we do not have cell phone service out here, so. Thankfully, I had the sense to pass the seemingly copious amount of free time by rehearsing my emergency checklists and other possible scenarios. It was fun to listen to radio calls by pilots over an area 400 miles wide keep an eye on my dead reckoning checkpoints, and take in some absolutely stunning scenery. So we're 15 miles out. We're at 6,500. We need to be at 3,000, uh, uh, 3,700. Definitely need to clean the windshield when we get there. And still looking for the airport. I think I've kind of got it picked out right here. I think I see some hangars and stuff, but I'm not absolutely certain. So actually, I think I'm looking right at the airport now. I see all the buildings and hangars and stuff. So well, let's try for one, two. So many good things happened on this 449 mile, three state, five hour flight. And we are blowing hard. We're gusting 24, 20 to 24. So we need to really be on top of uh, crosswind controls and things like that. Pretty nasty looking cloud over our head here. I'm not sure what to think about that other than just to get the heck out of here. The sudden increase in wind and cumulus clouds had me on my toes. Flying alone this far forced me to think about how to hydrate while maintaining positive control of the plane and having everything I might need within arm's reach. And what happens if you drop something? Also, the importance of tying down a plane, even if only for a few minutes. While at lunch, the wind suddenly picked up to over 30 knot gusts. Thankfully, the plane was still there when we returned. Well, I guess that cat's out of the bag now. Oh yeah, there's a storm cell right over us, so let's get out of here. Yeah, it's trying to drop some hail. 123 knots. Looks like we got a pretty nice tailwind. Maybe it'll blow us right out of here. Belts are fastened. I think at this point, uh, my journey, I think it's more important to get home. There's definitely clouds brewing over all the mountains, so let's go ahead and fly direct. I feel like we kind of got out of there in the nick of time. I think that storm that was blowing over the top of those mountains would have been an issue for us. We'd have waited five more minutes, so. Why they say that flying is a license to learn. I feel like I learned a lot today. I saw a pretty nasty cloud coming over an airport. In one hour, the wind from th uh, three to five knots, you know, not a big deal, uh, to gusting 24, actually steady 24. Um, we took off and we kind of encountered some virga on the edge of that black cloud and looking back behind us in the uh, 
poor flight looks like it turned into lightning and hail. So we definitely got bumped around a bunch coming through the valleys and the mountains there um, in the plains. Um, covered a lot of miles. Um, I feel like one thing I learned for sure is that in a solo cross country, you've got to you've got to have something to hold your stuff together. I mean, especially if it gets bumpy like that, I feel like I'm just glued to the airplane. It's very exhausting. I feel very tired right now. Um, I feel like I need to get more comfortable with the 430 and following my needle and flying flying the plane instead of uh, instead of looking down at my stupid GPS all the freaking time. Man, just keep flying the airplane. I think the landing here was a really great example. I think that landing today and enough to shake my boots a week ago, and I and I feel like I kind of understood the difference between the throttle and stuff. I think the really good news is that we're home safe. Covered a lot of miles and we learned that a lot of airports in the area share the same DTAF 122.8. <laughs> That's it. Good night. Can't wait to eat dinner with Alyssa, get some water and go pee. But that's not red, right? Yeah, I think it's supposed to be red. And I think this one, I was like, is that what lights up the instruments? Oh uh, yeah, you're blind on this third of the instrument. No reason not to use lights, so I'm gonna go to setting three. Give me a little more light off the wing. Yeah, another common thing at night is what I call automatic rough. You know, you'll be flying like, man, that engine doesn't sound quite right, you know? It's like, that doesn't sound, you know? You start thinking bad thing. Navigation lights on and our beacon light. Um, we'll probably turn our runway lights on. Okay, looks like they're active. Airspeed's alive. Let our eyes acclimate to it a little bit. Definitely can see the towers better at night. What you really want, you want your eyes to have enough light here to right. get the job done, but not overly much. Go ahead and, and turn the lights on again, just so I don't get them turning off on me when I come back in. Hopefully that should reset the timer. As instructors, we always like to have that go off at the last minute, and then we make sure. you land. You gotta be really careful with this, because it'll kind of surprise you. You know you're getting close to check ride now. In America, night training and privileges are part of your private pilot training. I can see why this flight happens so late in your training. Night flying, while stunning, comes with a totally unique set of challenges. All the things you've spent hours familiarizing seemingly become worthless by just taking away daylight. Even if you think you know an area or a cockpit like the back of your hand, you'll be totally lost with no visual cues. The effort and discipline needed is a small price to pay for the beauty you'll encounter. Smooth air, friendly controllers, and the night lights. So, I think I see the beacon already. Oh, cool. so I got green and white, which means it's a land civilian airport. So, we got in mind what to say? Yep. Okay, go for it. Spokane approach uh, Skyhawk November 19 or 69 or 8 with you at 8,400. Skyhawk 1 under 600, so can approach the intentions. Inbound for GEG, KGEG, -E uh, full stop landings. 698. Skyhawk 600, uh, Squawk 0346, you can make it straight in for runway 21 at Soaker National. 0346, uh, runway 21, uh, 698. We have information, Foxtrot 698. Thank you. So uh, 0346, that's our squawk code, runway 21. Yep. Straight uh, in. Straight in. Okay. And uh, green and white beacon over here. So I've got 0346, we're squawking, uh, we're lining up for runway 21, and uh, we're requesting a uh, stop and go. And we're looking Tell probably like to make for three uh, circuits. I don't yeah, know. Probably three. Three? Okay, no. let's do three circuits. Okay, look for the the red Vazzy lights. There's, yep, there's I see four of them there. There you go. Okay. The runway is just to the right of it. I'll warn you, this runway is huge, so okay. when you come in for a flare, you're, I think everybody wants to drop this one in. Yeah, Missoula was really tough that way. It's usually, Chuck 600 acre main the street, see runway 21, wind 130 on 6, clear to land. Clear to land, uh, 21, 6, 9, or 8. This is a good one. I, this, yeah. this would be one that I know Alyssa probably would have enjoyed. Well, you know, she asked me, and I said, I don't know. It's nice and smooth, lots of lights. Spokane approach, uh, Skyhawk, number 1, 6, 9, or 8. 6, 9, or 8, go ahead. 
Hey, we'd like to do uh, three stop and goes with you if we can, if that works tonight. Six hundred, no problem. Uh, runway two one, wind one two zero seven, clear for the option. Clear for the option. Six hundred. Now you can do whatever. You can do a low pass, touchdown, touch and go. Touch so and option go. means I have choices. I can do full stop. I can do a go around. I can yep. do stop and go, touch and go. We're on a four mile final. We still got quite a ways to go here, so we'll keep the power in. And um, you guys, am I going to get slowed down a little bit though? Yeah, no I will. Reason not to. Yeah. Directional? They are. And that's that's really tough. It is. Pretty much just a black hole. Um, Man, yeah, that's tough. If you were an 18-year-old kid, had your pilot's license, this would be pretty impressive to take your girlfriend over to Spokane International oh, and take sure. her for a ride, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we'll go ahead and turn final. It's got six and was this one a full stop or did you want another one? Yeah, we'll do a stop and go if we can. That's great, six nine eight. Six nine eight, Roger. Uh, Roman two one, wind one four zero on five. Clear for the option. Clear for the option. Six nine eight. Thank you. Are you around? Oh. Hold it off. Yep. Hold it off. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. Oh, you're kind of never really get into the flare. Uh, Skyhawk one hundred six nine eight. Skyhawk one hundred six nine eight. Go ahead. Hey, we'd like to depart to uh, Coeur d'Alene. Uh, thanks for all your help tonight. Skyhawk 608, I might lose you on radar here soon. Change to advisor frequency is approved. Have a good night. I appreciate the uh, traffic. That's cool. They actually wanted you to be there tonight. Keep him from falling asleep. I think I, we got to get home. It's 1 o'clock, and I'm sure you're tired as I am. So we did two there, three there. So that's five. Yep, we got five to go. Well, often you get to sit on an 11,000 foot runway and just yeah. hang out, like yeah. eat a piece of pizza. If night flying looks pretty amazing, that's because it is. It's special though, and it must be respected. So far, night flying is one of my favorites. It was love at first sight. up on me, but I wasn't really to let it go, I guess. I don't know. Hard to get super picky at 2 a.m., but I guess if I was a 2 a.m. pilot, I'd be... Yeah, I do this every day. Everybody has their pumpkin hour, that's for sure. Yeah. But glass closed. All right. Music. Mixture. Master and mags. Straight out departure. Somewhere out there, we'll get an engine failure. I'll let you know. If it, if it don't let you know, it's real. All right, let's lose your engine. Hey. I'll probably just do uh, a short leg and land in this field here. Around. You'd have made it a little bit later than I would have, but that seems to be the trend. Okay, you made it. Yeah, it's good. Staying on the ground effect will help you out. All right. Cool. How'd that feel? Good. I think, I, I think I'm grasping something that's still been affecting my landings and that's ground effect. The other thing though is your speed control on the last one was better than the speed control on the one before. Do a soft field again. Try to get that airspeed up and not deal with flaps until I'm above okay. obstacles and yep. things. That's good. That'd be a good one to fix. Nice. Starting to feel that wind, aren't you? Yep. That's a little bit steep. And your airspeed's gonna show it. Yeah, I see that now. Okay. I think that 
maybe because A, we have full fuel and you're in here. <laughs> my yeah. sight picture is coming from us flying alone. Yeah, you've been doing that more than with me for quite a while. I hadn't thought of that. If this angle is giving me 70, then what's going to give me 65? You know? Right. Yep. Rather than the sight picture, because it will change with density, altitude. you got to remember when we write in your logbook that all of our, you know, you got to have at least three hours of prep for the test. Okay. So when we make the entry, we need to say prep for check ride. Okay. As part of the what we write. Uh, okay. Well, I'll tell you right I'll now say. that, you know, when you get your license, yeah. you'll probably be better than you'll be for the next many years. I imagine, now. Yeah. yeah. Makes Unless sense, you though. practice at it. Right. Makes sense, though. Got a nice, good, steady 61, 62, and you rolled out and you ended up at 75, so a little hot. Cool. Well, you made it the non-traditional way, but you made it. I, I know. I get it. Like, I get the, the physics of it. I get the aerodynamics of it. I'm just working on the application of it, basically. A forward slip to landing is not one thing. It's a hundred. And it's all put together like in a little symphony. Over the last 18 months, I've flown 41 times, logged just shy of 65 hours, visited 15 different airports, Landed 182 times, flown at night, alone over wilderness, landed in strong gusting crosswinds more times than I can count. Learned to navigate by a paper chart, looking out the window, and using modern iPad flight apps. I've studied till my brain is about to explode. Had mock oral exams about charts, aerodynamics, FAA regulations, and had my airmanship reviewed by multiple instructors. I've pushed harder than I ever thought to say, I'm ready. It's time for my check ride. An opportunity suddenly came up to take a check ride at a distant airport. For me, sooner than later was better. I didn't want to wait too long for fear of getting rusty. It was a long flight, but I was familiar with the airport. You'll take any advantage you can get for a check ride. Plus, it'd be a nice chance to polish my flying before the big day. I scrambled to get my paperwork together and left out the day before to get some practice time at my check ride airport. It was time well spent learning the runways, traffic patterns, and landmarks. Um, so let's do a little bit of ground reference. <clears throat> I kind of use these bales of hay over here. And I think the wind is coming from the west. So we'll kind of enter on a downwind. And we'll do a uh, turn around a point there. Let's go over here and we'll use this road as a S turn. done. That's a pretty good run around the valley. Got used to the pattern a little bit here. I don't know, that last landing's a mess. I don't know what I was doing. I'm sure if I just landed hard and got a gust of wind or if I did that or what. Don't know. Weird. Despite getting basically no sleep, being hundreds of miles from home, and with winds that would have made most folks call off the check ride, I did some of my best flying that day. I honestly can't tell you what happened. Seems like when it really counts, all that training showed up. I arrived as a student pilot, and I'm heading for home a newly minted private pilot. I had pondered filming my check ride but came to my senses and decided it's a personal experience. I needed to be 110% focused on flying. You'll have to just take my word for it. Or better yet, take your own check ride. 
one, nine or six, nine or eight, block one five three zero, and go ahead. One five three zero six nine or eight. Uh, one nine or six nine or eight. I'll let you know when I pick you up on a radar. Stay altitude and also the uh, follow on altitude two nine or nine or one. Altitude seven thousand three hundred uh, two nine or one wall wall six nine or eight. One Charlie Fox Road, traffic 3 o'clock, 5 miles, northeast bound, 5,600, Scott. Oh, Charlie Fox. Scott, 698, traffic 12 o'clock, 5 miles, southeast bound, 5,900, speed 51, missing. Keep an eye out for the traffic, 698. Scott, 698, turn 15 degrees left, vector for traffic. 15 degrees left, 698. Scott, 698, maintain VFR at or below 5,500 for traffic. 5,500 or below, 600. Mustang 1, Charlie Fox, maintain visual separation from the Skyhawk and cancel off the restrictions. I guess that's the Charlie Fox. Scott 698, Mustang uh, just passed off your right side, has you inside and is maintaining visual separation from you. Cancel off the restrictions. Roger, 698. Check ride experience was exactly what I had hoped it would be. My examiner was a true professional. I had dreaded the experience right up until the moment we sat down in the quiet room and had pilot chat while he clicked away at the paperwork. Things are changing at the FAA. An institution once mired in academic questions and oppressive oral examinations has given way to a new way of thinking. In fact, that's what they're looking for, not textbook answers. They're looking at the way you think. How do you process scenarios? How do you manage risk? How do you use your judgment, training, planning, and resources so that you never have to find out if you're a truly incredible pilot? There he goes. That was worth it guys, and I'm sure it means a lot to Jesse for me to see him do his first landing as a private pilot. Welcome home. Hey. First order of business. P. I have to pay. <laughs> How's it feel? Uh, you know, yeah, it's good. I'm actually really glad I just did it. Like, yep. rip the band-aid band band off. off. Band-aid's off. Like it's done, I'm a pilot now, and I can go build my house now. Sweet. And I don't have to wonder if I'm ever gonna be a pilot. Yep. Nighty night plane, nighty night night. Come this way. Do your proud stance. My proud stance? Yeah. I already did one Yeah, of there we go. That's a, well, whatever <laughs> we want you. We want your personality. Oh, you'll get personality. Oh, that's the one I want right there. 100% juice has no alcohol. Sorry, buddy, but this Where's is the, the airport. That, you can't have alcohol at the airport. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 4.04 4. Oh. 4. and 8 hours the bottle to bottle. All right, to a very safe and enjoyable flying career. Heck yeah. yeah. I'll drink to that. And I'll go home and wash this down with some rum raisin ice cream. Yeah. This is so weird guys. It feels like we're just hopping in the truck or something to go for a drive like go get ice cream at the grocery store or something. And without mom. Uh, I'm excited. Me too. It's gonna be fun. It's such a beautiful evening too. The yeah. sun's setting. Ready? I'm ready. Okay. Ready? I'm ready. I think. God, I don't know. What am I getting myself into? I don't know. When I started this journey, I, I didn't know what to expect. You good? Yeah. Okay. All right. You want to take this so I can start sure. the plane? <laughs> or fly the plane? Clear prop! Wow. What a journey. Honestly, I had no idea what I was signing up for when I showed up for my first day of ground school. Little did I know I was walking into a foreign world. It amazes me that so many of us are affected by aviation, from commercial airline travel to overnight package delivery, 
yet it's so misunderstood. After this experience, I'd sooner jump in a plane with a pilot I've never met than drive a car pretty much anywhere. The training and investment required, the maintenance level of airplanes, the complex but accessible airspace system, professional traffic controllers, passionate flight instructors, weather forecasts, and skill reviews that make up aviation are mind-boggling. It turns out learning to fly a plane won't do you much good. You're better off becoming a pilot instead.